Today's lesson is on section 3.4, concavity and points of inflection. Your homework is 11 through 26. We're going to be doing it for two days. So that means the homework will be due Tuesday. So let's begin. So let's talk about um, concavity of my function, my original function. So all concavity means is back in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, if it opened upward or it opened downward. So if it opens upward, we're going to say it concaves upward. If it opens down, we're going to say it concaves downward. So now how to find concavity of my original function f. So there's two items here. It states if the second derivative, those outputs are greater than zero on some interval, then the graph of f, back to my original, concaves upward on that interval. Or if f double prime, those y outputs from my second derivative, if those outputs are negative, less than zero, on some interval, then the original graph of f concaves downward on that interval. It looks like this. And we'll work through a problem to see what that looks like. Let's go do points of inflection. So I'm going to scoot this all over like this, and I'm going to cover that up so you can't see that. All right, points of inflection. Um, all right, so what this is <coughs> is the point where the graph of f, so this is f, the original function, changes from being concave upward to concave downward and vice versa. And again, vice versa means you just switch those two or concave downward to concave upward. So I sketched out two original function f's. Um, this has concavity upward, concavity downward. At the point it switches over from up to down, that is a point of inflection. Or um, downward concavity and upward concavity at the point it changes, that is called my point of inflection. Well, how are we going to figure out if I have a point of inflection? And here we go. Here are two of them, the two ways. Number one, the point, again, I'm going to have some critical number here that I'm checking out, and I put it back into my original function. So I want to know what point on my original function. The point is a point of inflection of f since the concavity changes from upward to downward. Well, that is the definition of point of inflection. Or vice versa, vice versa, which means downward to upward. Or you have this scenario. This point is not a point of inflection of F when, since the concavity does not change at that point. If it's downward to downward or upward to upward. What might that look like? Um, so let's see. So that is up the whole time. And this point here is not a point of inflection because it's still upward the entire time. It did not switch over and start to hump where it's a, a concavity downward. It's still on it. And so um, how can I tell that on either side of this point C? is it must change from down to up. This one here, it's still up to up. The concavity is still up to up. Well, how do we do this in a math problem? Well, let's do one. Here's our uh, one and only math problem that we're going to do. The original function is x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is find concavity. I'm going to tell the reader that, but I'm going to write that down. Um, so I'm going to quickly put up here concavity, what we already seen. 
Oh, it wants me to get to the second derivative. And it wants me to look at the y outputs of the second derivative. So let's just get to the second derivative. So there's the first derivative. Bring down the 4, reduce the power. Bring down the 3, reduce the power. Do it again. Second derivative. Bring down the power 3, bring down the power 2. So my second derivative is 12x squared minus 24x. Now, what I want to do is I want to set that second derivative equal to 0. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to factor it. And in factoring it, 12x equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. So I get two values, x equals 0 and x equals 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those on um, my oh, sign chart. Uh, 0 and 2, I'm going to make sure I tell myself this is from f double prime. This is a little bit different than what we were doing. And all I need to do, again, let me take a look here. Oh, that's right. All I need to know is about the y outputs on this interval. So I'm going to have from these two values, I now have three intervals. I have this interval, this one, and this one. So I have a test point in each. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug them into the second derivative because I just want to know what is the sign of the output. So my first test point is negative 1. I'm going to put it in the second derivative. I do all the math and I discover it's going to be positive. So I put positive, my positive outputs. I test my next value, 1. After testing it, I realize that those outputs in that interval are going to be negative. So I put that up there in my sign chart. My last test point, again, I put in the second derivative. I'm, I have to do a lot of math just to find out if it's positive or negative. I find out that this output will be positive. I put that here. I am now ready to sum this up, to talk about the concavity of function f. So, since f double prime, in other words, <coughs> in other words <coughs> Those output, those y outputs on the second derivative are greater than zero on what? Mm. On this interval here. Isn't that what we said? From what? From negative infinity up until zero. From negative infinity up into zero, comma. Then the graph of f concaves upward on that interval. Next, I'm going to talk about this interval. Since f double prime, or those y outputs from the second derivative, again, there's my test point where I tested it, is less than 0 or negative on what? On this interval from 0 to 2. Then the graph of f, my original function, it concaves downward on that interval. Last, I have one more interval to talk about. <coughs> Since f double prime is greater than 0, in other words, those y outputs are positive when I choose a value or a test value in that interval. Since those y outputs are greater than 0 on this interval from 2 to infinity, then the graph of f, my original function, concaves downward on that interval. Now I'm ready to talk about my points of inflection. Well, let me take a look at what it said for points of inflection. It says this point on the original function, this is my original function, is a point of inflection of f, right, since the concavity changes from upward to downward at that point. Oh. So, we've already dealt with concavity right here. In fact, we've answered it here, and we've also got the, the sign chart of it here. So I'm going to use this to go ahead and talk about points of inflection. But first, I need to get those points. 
I need to get this point 0 what on my original function and 2 what on my original function. So that's what I'm going to do first. So I put in 0 into my original function because I'm looking for points of inflection on f. So I put 0 in, I get 0, so there's my ordered pair, there's my point. I put in 2, I get negative 16, so 2, negative 16. Those are my two points. Now I'm ready to already answer about points of inflection. The point 0, 0 is a point of inflection of f, well why? Since the concavity changes from upward to downward at 0, 0. Where did I get that from? Well, right here. At 0, the concavity changes from upward to downward, so this point on my original function, 0, 0, must be a point of inflection. Now I need to talk about this point. What point is that? 2, negative 16. 2, negative 16 is also a point of inflection of my original function, f, since the concavity changes from downward to upward at this point. I am now done. I have talked about um, concavity, and then I was able to answer about points of inflection. Again, how did I get this? I looked at 2, and my concavity went from negative to positive because it changed, because it went from um, downward concavity to upward concavity, that point to negative 16, that is clearly a point of inflection. Thank you.